Hello again and welcome to this third video lecture on the Kalman filter. We started this discussion by presenting the Gauss-Markov model, where we studied how the state, as a random variable, evolves in time. Then we derived the equations of the Kalman filter. We started by observing that the pair x0, y0 is jointly normally distributed. Therefore, we can estimate x0 given y0 by taking the conditional expectation of x0 given y0. This is the measurement update at time 0. We then use the time update to predict the, the expectation and variance covariance matrix of x1. At time 1, once y1 becomes available, we estimate x1 given y1. This is the measurement update at time 1. We proceed by interleaving measurement and time update steps. This is the Kalman filter. We also saw in the previous video that the Kalman filter can be used for position estimation from uh, noisy GPS measurements. In this video lecture, we will start by observing that the Kalman filter is affine. This means it has the form of a linear function plus a constant. And since it computes conditional expectations, it is a minimum variance estimator. We shall then drop the normality assumption and show that it is the best affine estimator. We say that the Kalman filter is blue, that is, it is the best linear unbiased estimator. Well, actually it is affine, not linear, but blue sounds nice. By combining the time and measurement updates of the Kalman filter, we can obtain this update equation. This discrete time dynamical system is sometimes referred to as the observer form of the Kalman filter. The Kalman filter in this form is clearly an affine estimator of xt plus 1, given all outputs from time 0 to time t. Recall that the estimate x hat t plus 1 at time t was previously taken to be the conditional expectation of xt plus 1, given all outputs from y0 to yt. This implies that the Kalman filter is unbiased. Moreover, the conditional expectation was previously shown to be the minimum variance estimator. Let's have a look at this result from the previous section. We showed that the conditional expectation of x given that y equals little y minimizes this metric, which is known as the mean squared error. In other words, no other estimator, let's say z of y, can attain a lower mean squared error compared to the conditional expectation of x, given that y equals little y. We can prove a stronger property. Define this matrix-valued metric. Define f of z with parameter y to be the conditional covariance matrix of the estimator error given that y is equal to little y. Then we can show that the conditional expectation satisfies this property. So it seems that the conditional expectation is a very good deal of an estimator. However, the challenge is that the conditional expectation can be difficult to determine. In general, without the normality assumption, it is a nonlinear function of y, and it can be very challenging computationally to determine it, because don't forget that conditional expectations are integrals. Suppose all we can afford from a computational point of view is a simple, humble, affine estimator. This leads to the question of the best affine estimator. What is the best affine estimator we can determine? Suppose that x and y are two jointly distributed random variables. We know that the best that is the minimum variance estimator of x given that y is equal to little y, is the conditional expectation of x given that y equals little y. We ask what the best affine estimator is. Now, without assuming normality, we need to determine a matrix A star and a vector B star such that the estimator x hat of y equals A star times y plus B star is the best affine estimator. The word best 
means that it satisfies such an inequality. No other A and B can achieve a lower value of this metric, which measures the quality of the estimator. This is in essence the expectation of the squared norm of the estimation error, and we will call it from now on the mean square error of the estimator. And we require that something very similar holds for each estimate. This is the conditional counterpart of the above result. With this theorem, we can determine A star and B star. So suppose X and Y are jointly distributed random variables, where X has expectation M subscript X, and Y has expectation MY, and the variance-covariance matrix of the vector X, Y is the one shown here. We assume that sigma YY is positive definite. The best affine estimator of x given y is given by a star y plus b star, where a star is sigma xy times the inverse of sigma yy, and b star is equal to mx minus a star times my. Again, best affine estimator means that this inequality holds for any a and b. Just a few observations before we move on. Firstly, the best affine estimator can be written in this form, which is telling of how it works and it makes it evident that it is unbiased. Note that the theorem does not require that x and y be normally distributed. It states a fact about the mean squared error, but we can show a similar result for the covariance matrix of the error and we will later use this theorem to show that the Kalman filter is the best affine estimator of xt plus 1 using measurements that are available up to time t. Before we move on to the proof, let's make a few observations. Firstly, the expectation of the squared norm of z is the expectation of z transpose z, which in turn can be written as the trace of z z transpose. We can move the trace outside the expectation to write this as the trace of the expectation of z z transpose. This expression is reminiscent of the covariance matrix of z, this z z transpose. Indeed, the variance of z is the expectation of z z transpose minus the expectation of z times its transpose. Solving for the expectation of z, z transpose, we see that this is equal to the covariance matrix of z plus this term. As a result, the expectation of the squared norm of z is equal to the trace of the variance plus the trace of this term. Note that the expected error of an estimator Ay plus b is given by mx minus amy minus b. The proof is very interesting and it, it hinges on the properties we just outlined. I would encourage you to go through it carefully, but it is rather technical and I don't want to overload this video lecture, so let's move on. Once you study the proof, you can solve this exercise. In this exercise, you can repeat the steps of the proof to show that the best affine estimator is also optimal in this sense. This means that the covariance matrix of the error of the best affine estimator is the quote-unquote smallest or minimal covariance among all affine estimators. Exercise 8 is quite straightforward. You need to verify once again that the best affine estimator is unbiased and its variance is given by this expression. We may apply the best affine estimator theorem to the problem of estimating the states from available outputs. We shall assume that x0, w and v are mutually uncorrelated random variables, not necessarily Gaussian, not necessarily normally distributed, 
w and v have a zero mean, the expectation of x0 is x tilde 0 and the covariance matrices of wt, vt and x0 are qt, rt and p0 respectively. We proceed the same way as we uh, did when we derived the Kalman filter equations. We start by saying that the pair x0, y0 is jointly distributed with this mean and this covariance matrix. By the best affine estimator theorem, the best affine estimator of x0 given y0 is given by this formula. Following the result of exercise 8, the estimator covariance matrix is given by this expression. These formulas are identical to the ones we derived for the Kalman filter. Having dropped the normality assumption, the estimator is not a minimum variance, minimum variance estimator. However, it is the minimum variance estimator among all affine ones. So recursively, we can show that the Kalman filter is the best linear, actually affine, unbiased estimator, for short, blue. We conclude that if all we can afford is an affine estimator, the Kalman filter is the best choice. In the next video lecture, we will give an alternative interpretation and derivation of the Kalman filter that lends itself to a generalization when the system dynamics becomes non-linear or the distributions are not normal. I am referring to the maximum a posteriori interpretation or MAP interpretation of the Kalman filter. Many thanks for watching and goodbye! <laughs>